In part two of this series with Franco Angelini, we'll build upon the foundation established in part one and detail the introduction to equipment through the creation of reliable muscle memory. These conditioned good, mechanics man. are the basis of consistent nice. training and Franco strongly believes that the helper can only focus on dog behavior and reinforcement good. once physical good. movement is technically correct, nice. habitual and fluid. Admittedly, this video series is designed for novice helpers, but will also be invaluable for helpers and handlers that have some experience and need more solid fundamentals and problem solving. Even experienced helpers looking to teach newcomers will greatly benefit from the step-by-step -step progressions. Because professional canine is often a service rotation rather than a true vocation, this series is designed to bring a professional canine handler the consistency of helper work that will elevate the quality of performance seen during deployment. The best handlers are good helpers because they know what the dog is communicating from, a, from, a, from an outside perspective. They're not taking the dog, but they see the behavior of the dog and where they recognize it is because they've done so much decoy work. That's why I emphasize this, is, this type of training because it plays such a major role in what we do and every day when we deploy these dogs should be part of a basic course. Nobody, nobody should work a dog that's inexperienced. There should be nobody in a body bite suit that doesn't know. There's, it shouldn't be hazing somebody to get them part of a canine unit and to see one. I totally agree that every handler should be on the receiving end of a dog. They should understand what they're deploying, and they, but they should do it in such a sense where they have a uh, not only a respect for it, but they can also help the program. Not just do it to do it, but have a good understanding of behavior, be mechanically sound, be able to read behavior, so when they are on the giving end, when they are handling the dog and he's going on another decoy, th that communication between, it's, it's so nice when you can work with an accomplished handler that's been a decoy, because they can read my body language. I don't have to say anything to the handler, they already know what my next move is gonna be. That is rewarding as a decoy. When I can start putting all my effort into the dog and know that that handler is a total support staff and if I make a step with my left, he knows why I made a step with my left, okay? If I fall back, he knows why I'm falling back and where my next step is gonna end up. That's what an accomplished handler that's been through a structured decoy course that understands behavior and understands mechanics can do for you. You get an inexperienced handler that's never been on the receiving end of a dog, you've not only done a disservice to the decoy, but you've done a disservice to the dog because he can't read basic behavior. You know, basic behavior goes beyond handling. It's when the dog is deployed is when you truly start to see the behaviors of an animal when he's in drive. And that's, you know, everybody talks about drive. Well, put a dog in drive, you're really gonna start to see the behavior. And if you can't read that, you've done a disservice to your own dog. So, importance, emphasis, become an accomplished decoy to a certain degree. In addition, our desire is that handlers are thoughtful about how their dogs are worked and by whom. Their own well-being is at stake while at the end of the line during deployment. For this reason, this series is for handlers as well. Through teamwork, progression will occur most quickly and a level of proficiency will transpire across the unit. As you view these programs, there are a number of things to take note of that will sharpen your eye and deepen your understanding. Some video examples of work will be ideal in some regards and not in others. You should take note of the apex and its proximity to both the dog and helper. Observe the helper's footwork during presentations and take note of equipment presentation and helper eye contact. Listen to the helper's auditory signals and observe their body language. Be mindful of the dog's efforts to improve its grip and consider the reasons, timing in relation to the helper's communication and physical feedback. Observe the helper's take hand position during arm, bite work and, and transitions right off of equipment right head, as well right as the, the dog's body right, language go, and those. vocalizations. Reach Finally, consider changes to the environment yeah. that include helper sure, hand position, eye and body longer. contact, proximity oh, to the handler oh, oh. and elevations off the ground. Attention to all of these will train your eye and help you to visualize your own movement and behavior when working dogs. Finally, we appreciate the dog handler teams that participated during the production of this series.
Filming occurred during a seminar class, and the helpers were relatively new to helper work, generally didn't know the available dogs, and had a variety of equipment.